So let's rank all the films I watched for the first time for the month of February 2024. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, they are known to as the Big D. Back with another ranking. Today I'm going to rank my first time watches for February 2024. I watched a total of 22 films. Now like the other, I will go rapid fire, but I will give you quick thoughts after I show you the titles of the movie. So I won't take too long on some of these films, because some I am going to be reviewing very soon once I get to them, okay? So, I hope you're ready for this, so let's get this over with and get on with the show. Sit back, relax, and here we go. Number 22 is... After Everything from last year. This is the final installment of the After franchise. I'm going to say it was okay. It's still not great in my view. These After films are more a miss than an in my view. But I think this would... This is probably the second least favorite for me. Because after we collide, I feel it's the weakest of them all. But this is probably the second one. Um, it's a shame we don't get to see much of the lean female and what have you. Just on the main guy and what have you. You can check out my my main review of this in the second half of the After Franchise main reviews. Be on the channel along with the next one which is coming up. So coming in at number 21 is... After Ever Happy from 2022, this is the next to last installment of the After series. I am going to say it's a little fair and what have you, but still, again, not great and what have you. But overall, I thought it was alright and what have you. If I had to rank these films, which I doubt I would, but I'll tell you anyway, this would probably come smack dab in the middle, right behind the first after and the third one after we fell. Yeah, it's sort of mostly it's the same thing, but it does have a few shakeups and what have you. But, well, uh, that's just another story. But anyway, it's okay and what have you. Now, coming in at number 20 is... My Bloody Galentine. Yes, you heard me correct pronounce that correctly. It's not Galantine, it's Galantine. It's a Tubi original. Now, I really don't care much for Tubi originals in my view, but I was curious because of this title, so I checked it out. And it's okay in my view. Not a great film, but I think it's a so bad it's good film. Yeah, about three women who plot revenge on, well, the, the dates or something. Uh, on their exes after they're dumped before Valentine's Day and their attempts to get even turned deadly. Yeah, this film's okay and why have you? It has an okay cast and well, it did have a few funny bits and why have you though. Yeah, so I found it to be an okay to be original flick. And coming in at number 19 is. Beastly from 2011. Uh, I didn't have any thoughts about this film, and well, I thought I'd watch it before it was dropped. It would be it was going to be dropped from Paramount Plus. I will say Vanessa Hudgens is is not too bad. And Alex Pettiford isn't too bad either. But the rest of the cast, well, I'm just going to say, kind of was a little. I don't know. It did okay at the box office, though. But I, anyway, I'm going to say it was pretty shocking, why have you? It was surprising to see just Mary Kate Olsen by herself. This Neil Patrick Harris was in this, so was Dakota Johnson. Pierre Krause, who I know from Six Feet Under. Yeah, really something. Beastly, I'm thinking, is an okay film. Maybe I'll think of reviewing this film sometime down the road. It's an okay flick and what have you. And coming in at number 18 is... Freelance from last year. Um, this film was okay and what have you. It did have a few fun bits and 
had some pretty decent action, John C. and YB, but this just wasn't his best film, though. You can find out why when I, when you check out the main reviews that I did along with um, Roleplay, which I watched um, earlier this year, and Bottoms, which we'll see where that film winds up later on. Anyway, this film was just not Ryan Wiley. It was kind of a mixed bag. So, Freelance, yeah. Allison Brie was in this as well, and she was pretty good, though. And coming in at number 17 is... Little Giants from 1994. Now, I think I've only seen a little bit of this film, but I've never seen the film in its entirety until more recently. Um... I really do think this film was not too bad. It was kind of like the Mighty Ducks, except you know, but except with football and what have you. Um, I like the performances from um, Rick Moranis and L. Neal. They were absolutely very funny and what have you. Yeah, it was about these two brothers who, well, 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 coach rival Pee Wee football teams. Yeah, this was incredible. And why be? I never would have thought of it like that. Anyway, the film did okay. And why be? I might review this sometime down the road. Little Giants, kind of like Mighty Ducks, except with football. And coming in at number 16 is. Hero at Large from 1980. Uh, this film's kind of a mixed bag. And why have you? John Ritter is in this. He. Um, he's absolutely crazy and why have you in this. He's an actor who accepts the job of posing as a comic book superhero for the needs of a film's promotion. And well, while wearing his costume, he, his life becomes unexpectedly complicated and why have you and decides to play superhero and why have you. Anyway, yeah, he was pretty, anyway, John Rear was pretty good in this. Um, Ann Archer's in this and... To my surprise, game, late great game show great Burt Convy was in this movie too. Wow. I didn't even know that until I saw the trailer for this film. That's incredible. But anyway, yeah, Hero I Lars, it wasn't too bad of a film. Next, coming in at number 15 is... Yesterday from 2019. Now, this film's kind of a little... Odd and what have you. It's about this struggling musician who suddenly finds himself as the only person who remembers the Beatles and becomes famous for performing their songs. It's kind of a strange film and what have you, but overall, I thought it was pretty decent and what have you. I mean, it's just that it was just almost kind of like what I was expecting, but I knew it had to do something with them. The Beatles and why have you, and one person remembering who they are and why have you. Anyway, yesterday, it's it's an okay film. Pretty good. Now, coming in at number 14 is... Studio 666 from 2022. This is the horror film with Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters. Yeah, when I saw this was coming to Tubi last month, I thought, what the hey, I thought I'd check it out. Since I am a fan of the foods and what have you, I am going to say this film is totally warped out and crazy and what have you. But as the foods move into a cursed mansion to record a new album, oh man, this is absolutely mind-blowing and nuts and other kinds of things and what have you. Well, anyway, I'll definitely need to... um. Review this film sometime down the road. This film was just so crazy, and its kills were bloody and gory. Definitely. So, we'll see what happens if I decide to talk about this film. And coming in at number 13, here's another film that has a little music in it, and that is... Mamma Mia! from 2008. And I'm going to say that... Since I recently became a big ABBA fan, I, and I saw this was on Netflix, so I thought for once I finally decided to check it out. I'm going to say this film's not too bad. It's kind of mixed, though, on me and why have you. I mean, it does have a big ensemble cast, and 
while performing all the song, a lot of the songs that Abbott did in What Have You, since I heard most of them in What Have You, since I recently got one of their hits albums for Christmas last year. It's a pretty fun movie. I really thought it was fun. We'll see where its sequel winds up in a little bit in What Have You, but anyway, Mamma Mia, very good. I'll think of reviewing that sometime down the road. And coming in at number 12 is... Orion and the Dark. This is a new collab between Netflix and DreamWorks Animation. It's not too bad. It's it's pretty fine, what have you. I mean, kind of a little, <laughs> a little strange at first, but it turns into an amazing fantasy adventure flick. I recently did a main reviews vid of this early, er, well, earlier last month, along with The Tiger's Apprentice, which we'll see where that film winds up later on. Orion and the Dark it's not too bad of a film. It's it's pretty good and what have you. I wouldn't consider it be one of the best DreamWorks has given us, though, even though Netflix released it. Oh, well. And coming in at number 11 is... Mamma Mia! Here We Go Again from 2018. Now, I thought this was a little bit of an improvement over its predecessor and what have you. I mean, well... Meryl Streep, who appeared in the first film, doesn't appear much in this film, but that's understandable. But at least we got performances from everybody we saw in the first film, plus some new additions, especially Cher. Yeah, who I found out actually recently did an album of covers of Abbott's songs herself. I haven't heard any of them, though, to be honest, but, well, she did do one of those. In the movie. But anyway, Mamma Mia, here we go again. I kind of like this a little more than the first film and what have you. It was very good and what have you. Okay, that about wraps up this half. Let's get the top 10 going. Coming in at number 10 is... The Last Voyage of the Demeter from last year. I am going to say this is kind of underrated. This film didn't do too well at the box office, but I'm going to say this is a very good prequel to The Story of Dracula. I'll explain more as I do a review of it later this you know, in just a couple more days. So I hope you'll be waiting, waiting for that. No, not in a couple days. I think, no, 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 in a few more days this week. Sorry about that. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so I don't want to give you too much details. I'm going to say this film was pretty dark and scary and what have you. Now, coming in at number nine is... The Equalizer from 2014. Now, while I have recalled seeing a little bit of the, the actual show itself long ago, but I've never actually... But I've never really watched that new version with Queen Latifah and what have you. But I decided to give this film a go for... I thought it was pretty good. I have yet to watch the sequels. I may have no I might have may not have a choice but to rent the second one and watch the third one since it's been on Netflix for a while and what have you. But Denzel Washington did an exceptionally good job in playing the titular character. I'll try and review these films later on this year. We'll see what happens. But anyway, Equalizer is not too bad. Uh, I've heard the third one's really good and what have you with uh, so, next coming in at number eight is Thanksgiving from last year. I watched this film twice already on Netflix. First when it premiered, and then I watch it again because I am going to plan to do a spoiler-free review of this film. I'm just going to tell you it was really crazed and what have you for a horror flick, especially being directed by Eli Roth, as, and especially since it has bloody gore kills. I won't tell you much more about this. Watch for my review of it coming up in the next video. Okay? Enough said about it. Next film. Coming at number seven is... Madam Web. Now, this film still getting disc like crazy and what have you. But I defended this film, and I'm thankful my review's gotten a lot... Well, over 25 views and what have you, so I'm relieved about that. Anyway, but I understand everybody's not liking this film, and I can't understand the fact that it's gone bomb and what have you. I understand and what have you. So anyway, Dakota Johnson, I liked her. The rest of the cast wasn't too bad either. Check out my spoiler-free review of it if you haven't already, because I've already talked about this film. 
Okay, enough said, Valley. And coming in at number six is Bottoms from last year. Now, I recently did this feature, this anime review, as I've said earlier, with freelance and roleplay. I'm going to say of the three of those, I like this a whole lot. This might be in the LGBT, well, you know, the rest. But I don't care. I felt like this film was absolutely very funny. Funniest chick flick with this flavor I've seen since Book Smart. I gotta say, Bombs is absolutely very funny. If you have not seen it, you gotta check it out. Check out the main reviews vid that features this review and why have you. I originally had this in 7, and now I'm web in 6. But I decided to switch them in why have you, because I like Bombs a little more. So this way I wouldn't have to let y'all get all, you know, and what have you. And coming in at number 5 is... Priscilla, also from last year. Now, this is a um, another film on the, that focuses on maybe not Elvis, but actually on the life of his wife. And what have you. Now, well, even though I like Baz Luhrmann's Elvis from 2022, but this one comes up right behind it. The film's actually currently now streaming on Max and also to watch on HBO. So, anyway... I thought this film was very, very good. You'll get to see that in a main reviews video coming up later in the week, so I won't give you much details on it. But I actually really like the, the people starring in this and why have you. So, anyway, Priscilla's a pretty good movie. Next, at number four is... The Tiger's Apprentice. And this recently came to Paramount+. Plus. Of course, I did mean reviews video review on this along with Orion in the Dark. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Anyway, I really think The Tiger's Apprentice I feel like was a pretty good film and what have you, especially when it came to Paramount Plus. I didn't know what to think of it, but after watching the trailer, I thought it was awesome. What have you? I mean, it was just so good and what have you. It kind of made me feel like I was watching a different take on some of those films that kind of took on the little Chinese feel like Kung Fu Panda or Mulan or even Raya and the Last Dragon. You'll hear more about that in the main reviews vid. Check it out and what have you. And coming in at number three is... When Harry Met Sally from 1989. Now, I've only seen bits of this film. This is the first time I've watched this film in its entirety. Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan are absolutely very, very good and what have you. Especially in that little diner scene when... Um, Sally's made all those sound well, and why have you? And um, the old lady customer's like, I'll have what she's having. Oh boy, that was so crazy. Anyway, Rob Reiner did a great job on directing this film. I definitely need to review this film sometime this year for its anniversary, so we'll see what happens. When Harry met Sally, it turned out to be pretty good, and why have you? But it was really tough to go for the top two, though. Uh, we have one big okay, one big award winner in one of you, and one that really was a real, well, I'll explain as I get to it. So coming in at number two is Oppenheimer from last year in 2023. This film's already been a big winner. It's already won some Golden Globes and others. Now, I wish this film the best of luck at the Academy Awards, even if it goes up against the other, the film that went up against it, Barbie and what have you. But I think this will be a big Academy Award when maybe get the big award without much trouble, and I do mean best picture. But it does have some other competitors, not just Barbie, but um, also the Holdovers and Poor Things, which I am going to do many reviews of, along with, another, along with Priscilla later in the week. But anyway, Oppenheimer was... Very good and what have you. It just kind of missed the top by that much due to the fact that I just wasn't thrilled with it seeing so many black and white scenes and what have you. But I still like the film for what I had to offer. Christopher Nolan did a great job with directing. And Cillian Murphy did one hell of a job in playing the titular character. I really like the rest of the cast as well. Robert Downey Jr., Florence Pugh, everyone. They were exceptionally good. And finally, my number one first time watch of February 2024 is...
Ordinary Angels. Now, originally we were supposed to get this last year, but due to the Taylor Swift concert flake, it was postponed, unfortunately. But we got it, and now I already reviewed this film recently. Now, I failed to point out my video, this, my video review of this. It, this film might also leave y'all in tears and what have you. It does have a few moments that might be well, sad and what have you. So I would, I forgot to mention, you better take your Kleenex with you. So just in case and what have you. But anyway, I love the performances from everyone in the film. The story was good. It is a true story film. Hilary Swank really stole the show in this movie. I think this film was just so amazing and incredible and what have you. I don't care what anybody says. But anyway, Ordinary Angels, it was very good. I thought it was good. And of course, it's the one film that got the only top film I gave five stars to last month. But anyway, Ordinary Angels, definitely bring your Kleenex as well. I'm sorry I forgot to point out my review of the film. But anyway, so now you know what my first time watches for February 2024 are. What did you think of the ranking? What's your, what are some of your first time watches for last month, February 2024? Excuse me. Give me your top pick. You can give me your top three or your top five. Leave them for me in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And join me next time when I bring to you my spoiler-free review of Thanksgiving. So if you like this, check out my some of these movie reviews I've done. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Ordinary Angels. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Oppenheimer. Or go to the bomb left hand corner and see my review, my mini reviews on roleplay, freelance, and bottoms. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big B saying, see ya.